I want to make an odometer for my model car. For those of you who don't know, an odometer is a device that measures the amount of distance your vehicle has traveled. An odometer works by calculating how many times the wheel has rotated and multiplying that number by the circumference of the wheel. Now, attaching some kind of mechanism directly to the wheel to calculate how many times it has turned isn't very smart. However, none of these other places work either because of all the gear reduction and just because the engine is running and there is movement in the gearbox doesn't necessarily mean the vehicle is traveling. So the best and really only place that is gonna work is right here next to the drive shaft or the differential. The number of times the drive shaft has rotated is always proportional to the distance the vehicle has traveled. I think I'm gonna attach another gear right here and position the odometer right here. The odometer itself is going to be just a simple mechanical counter with a three digit display. It's going to count the amount of rotations the wheel has made. I based it off of Matthias Mendel's design. And now some very simple math. So the circumference of my wheel is approximately 0 0.55 meters, which means one rotation of the crankshaft equals to 0 0.55 meters traveled. However, for my odometer, one full rotation should equal to one meter traveled. And so we have to convert this into this, which is quite simple. Just one divided by 0 0.55, which equals to around 1.8. So this is the gear ratio that I need to put between these two shafts. And as for numbers of teeth, I'll go with 10 and 18 because this combination is going to replicate this gear ratio. I printed out a sheet of gears with a lot of extra spares. I'll be using 8, 10, 18, and 20 tooth gears. I'm not going to show you the process of cutting out and sanding all of these gears because that's pretty self-explanatory. However, I do want to point out that whenever possible, I try to nail together multiple layers of plywood so that I can cut out multiple gears at once. This saves a lot of time. I finished making most of the pieces and now I'll just glue them into three separate sets. So apparently there were actually four sets of pieces and the fact that we all have a hole through them makes it very convenient to clamp them. I made a little testing jig but it doesn't really work yet because there is way too much friction between these teeth so I'll have to sand everything to make it work. I'd say it's a little bit smoother now, but now I'll also lubricate this thing with wax and that should help a lot. I think that's good enough. It is much smoother now. Now I need to figure out how to attach this thing in here. There's just barely enough space. This is the 10 tooth gear I was talking about. I'll use it to reduce the speed of a drive shaft. I'm using another 18 tooth gear to work as a spacer between the drive shaft and the odometer. And when you're using a gear as a spacer, it really doesn't matter how many teeth there are. You just have to remember that the only thing it does is change the direction of a rotation of the output. A little problem I encountered is that this counter shaft sometimes pushes on this gear. So I need to cut off this little bit right here. I 
I thought you guys might also like to see my new camera setup. Uh, at the moment, it only has my phone case in here because I'm using my phone to record it. But you can see it uses a ball joint for positioning. And also these two pivot points. So I can use it to record my bandsaw, uh, the table, or this part right here. And in the future, if I need to, I can also carry it to my lathe or drill press. Trying to fit this thing into place is a nightmare. I'm limited in space basically everywhere uh, by the drive gear, the rear axle, the brake caliper. But I think this is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to position this counter shaft right here. I can't really put it anywhere else. I'll make two four millimeter brackets uh, to test fit these two pieces into place. What I need to keep in mind when designing them is that I want to keep this part one centimeter off of the ground and the distance between these two shafts, however they are positioned, needs to remain the same as between these two testing holes. I have to apologize for I was not able to record much of a build process, but I didn't actually add all that much. I just made these two side plates and connected them with another piece of plywood on the bottom. Now, for those of you who are unfamiliar with how mechanical counters work, let me explain. You have an input gear right here, and when it turns and reaches this point right here, it moves this gear, which moves this gear one tenth of a rotation, so one digit. And at any other time, these gears cannot move. As you can see, they're prevented from doing that right here. And this basic principle repeats on every other gear. So you can, as you can see, now two of the wheels move at the same time. So you can theoretically have this counter have infinite digits. But in this case, I only have three and therefore it's gonna max out after 999 units, or in this case, meters. One problem is that these gears aren't very precise, and because of that, I had to keep the spacing between these two shafts slightly longer than recommended. And because of that, there is quite a bit of slack in the mechanism, and so the numbers on the display might be a little off. One of the many realistic features of this car is that it is very cramped and there is basically no space for anything. For example, this odometer doesn't really fit too well because it gets squeezed between the gearbox, rear axle, and the brake mount. Considering the fact that this brake mount is already cracked and needs to be replaced, I think I have a solution to kill two birds with one stone. Now that there is enough space for the odometer, I want to quickly test fit it and see if everything works. took a little bit of adjusting and a lot of wax to get it running so smoothly. Now the last thing I need to do is attach this overlay and also write down all the numbers. I can only attach this overlay from this point and it's not going to be attached here. I don't really like that but I think that's the only way I can really do it. I need to write down 30 numbers in very specific locations. What are the chances I don't make any mistakes?
Well, just as I thought. I messed up the numbers on the first wheel. I was supposed to put them in these, these gaps between where the actual numbers are right now. I'll have to sand it and do it all over again. And this marker doesn't really sand off very well. I fixed the first wheel and it's a little bit better now. The numbers still have a lot of trouble matching with these squares. And that's because of the uh, slack, as I've said before. There's nothing I can really do about it. I'll just have to live with it being this way. To prevent the metal shafts from constantly falling out, I'll glue on these two side plates. I'm leaving one of the holes exposed because it's going to get covered by the gearbox. Well, it's not perfect, but it's about as complete as it'll ever be. I had to stop the test because my battery was starting to die, uh, but in theory that was 265 meters. Probably the most realistic feature of the odometer is the ability to increase the car's resale value. Ferris Bueller would be proud. <laughs> 